Welcome back, Pokemon trainers, and good morning. It is currently around 9 a.m. here in Portland, Oregon, yep. and we are here to bring you the 2020 Portland Regional Championships. This is Championship Sunday. We're going to be featuring all seven uh, top cut battles. That's four top eight matches, and then two top four matches, and then obviously one final. Yep. I'd be a little concerned if we had two finals, but, you know, <laughs> we're not doing a double a limb or anything like that. No, just one big final to uh, end the day and get a regional champion. Yeah, so my name is Gabby Snyder. I'm joined here by Len Duell once again. And what an incredible day we had yesterday for, um, you know, some Pokemon playing. We saw some very interesting teams. Um, we were talking a little bit about them before we went live. So mm -hmm. why don't we give a little recap of, um, you know, just what we saw yesterday and what anything you're expecting going into a top cut. Well, the undefeated team was the most interesting to me. It's that team yeah. with the uh, very specially defensive Trick Room Palkia, kind of helping a stack attack a sweep, uh, using maybe a little bit of lack of Xerneas to help Palkia be, uh, have a lot of staying power in the field because yeah. it only has those two weaknesses, Dragon and Fairy. Mm -hmm. If you don't expect Xerneas, there aren't that many Dragon attacks flying around. Suddenly, it feels like Palkia can live forever and set Trick Room whenever it wants. And it was really uh, successful for Bing G yesterday, going 7-0. Yeah, and I mean, that that's like the literal definition of success, so yeah. Yeah, and that'll be the first match we'll have up. He'll be playing against a Psy Spam kind of team from Kareem. Uh, Which we saw, I believe, the last round of Swiss yesterday. Yeah. Um, he lost to Gavin Michaels, but somehow they both made it into cut. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Snuck in at that 5-2, and two, and I think it's actually kind of a troubling matchup for the Palkia. Uh, it can do so much damage so quickly that those turns that feel like they should just be comfortable trick rooms, suddenly you are under a little more threat. So I'll be interested to see how that plays out. Uh, Bing G must have a plan for it. I'm sure he's played plenty of that matchup before. Yeah. And I'm interested to see how he finds kind of his space to trick room and... Once he does have it, the good thing is that that team's a little more frail. It's easy for Stack Attack to just kind of cleave its way through. Yeah, and these trainers are entering team preview. We have their teams featured on the screen. You're going to be seeing uh, Kareem on the bottom side of your screen with the Metagross, Smeargle, Tapu Lele, Groudon, uh, Dawnwings, Necrozma, and a Selgur team that we saw, again, final round of Swiss yesterday against Bingji's team, which I think we actually saw first round of Swiss. So not yeah. only is this first and eighth seed, this is like last first and last round of Swiss uh, with Tapu Lele, Kartana, that Palkia, that Rayquaza, that Stack Attacka, and good old Incineroar. You know, it's just getting a one last moment of glory before uh, we switch formats later on in the year. Yeah. I'm really interested to see what lead Kareem goes with. You know, that Psychic Swim team it needs to get a lot of momentum going quickly and has a lot of different tools of ways to start the game. You can see things like the Psychic Train coming out immediately, the Aselgor out there immediately. You can see Smeargle there to support. Uh, he's going to need to make a choice of which one of those leads is going to help him deny the Trick Room. And it's going to be really pivotal uh, in this match, whether he picks successfully. Yeah, and the other thing that I found interesting was, you know, yes, there are two Dragon-type Pokemon on Bing Ji's side of the field, but there's also two Steel-type Pokemon with the Kartana and that Stack Attacka. If Kareem does decide to Lele Showdown, both trainers bringing their Tapu Lele out onto the field with Kareem leading the Smeargle alongside of it and Bing Ji revealing that Palkia right away. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that Bing Ji brought his own... Uh, Tapu Lele out could have been giving Psychic Train to some uh, things that would have really liked it. On Seriously, side. yes. <laughs> but instead, Cream also brings out his Tapu Lele, and we would have had Psychic Train either way. Uh, probably looking for Trick Room behind some offense from Tapu Lele here. Yeah, Tapu Lele going for a big Moon Blast here, boosted by the Helping Hand from that Smeargle, connects with the Palkia, and that is a clean knockout. You know, unfortunately for Palkia, not going to have much time to do anything this game. Taunt from Car our Binji's Tapu Lele goes into that Smeargle as it gets a special defense boost, so really big turn from Kareem there. I like how he just removed the Trick Room setter from the field and immediately with the help of that helping hand. Yeah, I think he found a really great re lead, right? I was talking about needing to find something that could deny the Trick Room, and this Miracle Tapu Lele does it incredibly because what the Tapu Lele has done is deny Fake Out from the Incineroar, meaning that Tapu Lele will get to attack. We know that the helping hand Moonblast, massively powerful fairy attack, we, that's the thing we were talking about with Palkia that makes it strong, is there yes. aren't that many of those super effective attacks. But there, a very strong one comes out, 
just KOs Palkia before it can move, denies the Trick Room, and immediately makes this game incredibly difficult for Bingji. And not only that, you know, Bingji revealed that he also brought the Rayquaza. So just two Dragon-type Pokemon um, with Psychic Terrain up, Extreme Speed is not a viable option for that Rayquaza. So there's nothing stopping Kareem from going for another Helping Hand Moonblast. And well, well, he wouldn't even need the Helping Hand, I don't think. I imagine, yeah. and he, he has been taunted, so he couldn't Helping Hand. He's going to have to switch. I would expect Rayquaza to protect, but that Moonblast could easily go in and start trying to 2 it KO the other top of the Lele, too. Yeah, really, all uh, all Kareem needs to do is just position himself so that when this Rayquaza is caught off guard and left vulnerable for an attack, whether that's from, you know, the turn after the Protector this turn, he's able to knock it out with that Tapu Lele um, and then just l clean up with this Groudon. You know, I like this adjustment here. There's nothing really on Bingji's side of the field to threaten that Groudon as Tapu Lele going for a Moonblast into Bingji's Tapu Lele brings it down to about half of its health. Rayquaza does not protect, does not Mega Evolve, instead going straight for that Dragon Ascent into the opposing Tapu Lele. That is a knockout. So... Uh, Bingji did find a way to remove the Tapu Lele from the field, but it, it's all, it's late. It's a little late for that. I think it's a really smart play from Bingji, though. Like you said, if, that, if he just protected with Rayquaza, it would have been very easy for the Moonblast to follow behind the Protect on the next turn. He found the one turn where he could slot it in, where Kareem maybe gets a little bit ahead of himself, just assumes that Protect is coming out. So that's the one turn Rayquaza can get an attack off and just remove the Tapu Lele, which is huge because now Rayquaza will be much more comfortable on the field. Yeah, and Tapu Lele on Bingji's side of the field actually went for its own Moonblast into that Groudon um, didn't deal nearly as much damage as we've been seeing from the opposing Tapu Lele, which is an interesting thing to note. Yeah, probably was actually looking to target the Tapu Lele on Cream side. Didn't expect yeah. Dragon Ascent to just so cleanly pick up the KO without uh, being able to Mega Evolve his uh, Rayquaza there, but it does, and so he hits a little bit of extra chip damage and grab on as well. Yeah, Smeargle out on the field for Kareem. No taunt this time. Will be able to follow me, helping hand, uh, do whatever it wants this turn. Could go for something like a fake out as well. Yeah, I think the follow me uh, is really useful. Like you said, fake out onto Rayquaza as an option because it is flying up in the air. Uh, but I think right now every ground on attack is is a big threat, right? It's the scary. Like, I mean, we, we know from yesterday that this is a physical ground on. I believe we saw the use of Press with Blades on stream. Um, I guess that can't connect with the Rayquaza, but if it connects with that Tapu Lele, that's an easy knockout. Um, you know, this Groudon might be able to target down this Rayquaza in another way, so um, it's interesting that Bingji decides to keep Tapu Lele safe of all the Pokemon available, but, um, you know, sending in the Incineroar to intimidate that physical Groudon is a good place to start. Yeah, it is, and Rayquaza is still feeling a little bit comfortable in the field here. Like you said, Groudon not too big of a threat for it. No, and it looks like that Mega Rayquaza will finally go for the Mega Evolution, uh, going to remove the sunlight from the field as well. So if Groudon is trying to target down this Rayquaza with some kind of fire attack, maybe a fire punch, it is not going to have the boost of the sunlight, and that Groudon will have been intimidated as well. Smeargle draws attention to itself on the field with a Follow Me as the Rayquaza going for a Dragon Ascent that should bring Smeargle down to Focus Sash, and we'll have to see where this uh, Groudon decided to target this turn. If it did go for the Rayquaza, that could be some really um, you know, mitigated damage, but if it decided to go for a Ground-type attack into that Incineroar slot, you know, that could have been a really good advantage, but instead Fire Punch into that Ray oh, into the Incineroar even, it just doesn't do any damage. Yeah, it was just looking to not risk Presbyte's Blades missing against Tapu Lele, and so easily yeah. pick up the KO with Fire Punch. I think that's a good read uh, from Big G's side to find the opportunity to keep Tapu Lele safe, get the Intimidate off, and get Incineroar in pretty comfortably, where now it's threatening the fake out against Smeargle that would let the Dragon Ascent go in on Rayquaza. You'd get to minus two defense, but still, uh, with the Fire Punch without Sun behind it. Uh, and probably the Intimidate. And the Intimidate. So so not too much of a threat to Rayquaza. I think Bing G is doing a great job of clawing his way back into this game after losing to his Palkia so easily to Tapu Lele on the first turn. Yeah, I agree. It's almost like Bing G let the Palkia get knocked out, knowing that it would allow him to position Rayquaza better as the game continued. Yeah, I don't know. That might be a little <laughs> optimistic, but he's definitely found uh, made the best of a, of a difficult situation. Uh, let's see. No, no fake out. Yeah, no fake oh, out. Or f fake out to follow the follow me. I, you know, we will find out in a moment, no. but no fake out indeed, as that Rayquaza is going to use Dragon Ascent to KO the Smeargle. You know, that that's a huge cost to pay for literally one health point of damage. You know, the uh, defense drop, the special defense drop, 
And uh, it, it, Incineroar could go for something like a U-turn or some here to try and make up for it. But Groudon going for the Precipice Blades, not going to target that Rayquaza, will connect with the Incineroar and almost knock it out, just barely missing that KO. Incineroar not revealing any sort of berry, instead going for a U-turn into its partner Rayquaza, allowing Tapu uh, Lele to return to the field. Yeah, Tapu Lele coming out at good timing here. Of course, Snow Fake out because the Psychic Drain is still down there protecting that Smeargle and forcing the Dragon Ascent to get rid of that 1 HP. But the Psychic Drain could be helpful here is that Tapu Lele can come back out and get Psychics off. Uh, it'll be a big threat. Uh, man, that Precipice Blades in it in Cinerar is, I think, an interesting choice where it shows that Groudon really couldn't threaten the Rayquaza so much and had to, force, to be forced to go after a lower priority target. But it just means this... Rayquaza will get more turns to safely be out here Dragon Ascending things, even though it had to spend one of those Dragon Ascents getting rid of one HP from Smeargle. Yeah, and Kareem revealing his final Pokemon for this game one. It is going to be the Dawnwings Necrozma. So a good Pokemon to save for the end. I mean, Psychic Terrain is still active on the field, but unfortunately for Kareem, you know, Big G kind of controls whether or not that Psychic Terrain is reactivated after it runs out or not. And I believe there's only like one more turn left on that. Yeah, this should be the last... Uh, turn coming up. I would guess uh, that it won't return just because getting Incineroar in might now, right now would be difficult and risky. It is at such uh, low health, and I think this is a good opportunity for Tapu Lele to immediately go on the offensive, uh, but probably will pay the cost of, of its time on the field. Yeah, it, it's a tough spot to be in. I think if I were in uh, Bingy's shoes, I would be trying to prioritize getting a KO onto that Necrozma. Um, just because the Groudon, you know, it has been intimidated, and it will be intimidated again once the Incineroar returns to the field. And, you know, knowing that uh, Fire Punch can only do so much damage right oh. now, um, that's going to be really tough. Tapu Lele revealing that it has brought Ally Switch into the game Switching places with that Mega Rayquaza on Bingy's side of the field and taking a Photon Geyser as a result. You know, it does cost Tapu Lele its remaining time on the field, but this gives Rayquaza an opportunity to go for a third Dragon Ascent into that Ultra Necrozma. It's going to be dealing some really big damage here, and if it's able to get that knockout, uh, Bingy could have found a way to win this game one after such a detrimental start to this game. I mean, it was an absolutely massive alley switch. What a perfect time to reveal it, where there, it looked like there was kind of very little hope left. If Rikaza was about to go down to that Photon Geyser, then there just isn't the offense left to win the game. Uh, and so Ally Switch comes out perfectly timed to save Rayquaza, take down Necrozma, and now you're in a great position. You have uh, Incineroar and Rayquaza ready to uh, to take down this Groudon. Yeah, I, it's possible we're going to see the Groudon go for a Protect this turn if it does not want to be the target of a fake out from that Incineroar. But, you know, in the following turn, Groudon can only target one of these right. Pokemon at a time since Precipice Blades will never connect with the Rayquaza since it's flying up in the air. So overall, just a really good spot for Bingy to be in, even though his Pokemon are very, very close to being knocked out. Yeah, I mean, I think the Dragon Ascent and the Dark Move should together be enough damage to pick up the KO on this ground on a complete, uh, a really impressive comeback for Bingy. Uh, if you're Cream and, and you don't win this game, where you got the free KO on Palkia, you've got to be really uh, questioning how you're going to pick up the next two uh, when things seemed like they were going so well after one turn. But let's see if it's enough damage. Here comes the Dragon Ascent from that Rayquaza into the Groudon. This is some great information for both these trainers as well as we go into game two. Oh, it's it enough is all by enough itself. to get a KO all by itself. And Bingy wins game one in top eight here at the Portland Regional Championships. Um, one thing I want to call out is, you know, as prior to this match starting, they were talking a lot about Trick Room on Bingy's, you know, team. He has the Stack Attacka, he has the Palkia. Um, both those Pokemon really like Trick Room. But in this case, we didn't see any speed control from really either of these trainers, barring some choice scarfs on those Tapu Lele. Well, I would say we saw a kind of speed control from Cream, which is you deny the Trick Room and that's then you're true, faster the true. entire time, yeah. so you're you're just kind of comfortable with it. That's uh, true, but but his. It was important for Bing G that his Rayquaza was still faster than Groudon. Yeah. Uh, that should be expected, but we saw yesterday how slow uh, Bing G's Rayquaza is, so it was good to get confirmation of that, and of course would have made that game uh, w um, 
impossible for him if it had yeah. been the case. Yeah, um, I think I think that was what I found interesting about that. I mean, yes, you just knock out the Palkia to deny the Trick Room, but uh, Bingxi still felt comfortable in terms of how like turn order was playing out. Like it never felt like sometimes when you run Trick Room teams, you uh, you index so heavily on being able to get Trick Room up. As soon as that uh, speed control option is denied, you're just in a really tough spot, and the match kind of falls apart. Whereas it felt like Kareem and Bingxi were very evenly matched throughout that game, even though. So, you know, there were some pitfalls here and there. Yeah, I mean, I think the Rayquaza showed a ton of value uh, in what it was able to do. But you have to look back at the game and remember a couple turns that saved it for Bing G that were yes. very risky. There's yes. the turn that he just attacked with Rayquaza and could have been Moonblasted away, right? Yep. Obviously, that would have ended the game if yep. you just lose Rayquaza oh, and Palky in successive turns. And then there was the ally switch, where if that moon that uh, Photon Geyser just been aimed in the other spot because he expected the ally switch, that ends the game immediately. So Bing G does win that game one, but escapes because of a couple kind of 50-50 things. One where he had a big information advantage and the other where he just made a very strong read. Uh, so that is Kareem's answer of how he comes back in the next two games. Next two games, but I can't imagine that Bingji gives away Palkia so easily here in game two. Yeah, it looks like we're seeing a mix up here from Kareem leading the Tapu Lele alongside of the Donwings Necrozma and on Bingji's side of the field, Tapu Lele and Palkia. So once again, these Tapu Lele are going to be facing off, but instead of the uh, Smeargle on the field, we're seeing the uh, Donwings Necrozma and the Palkia. Yes, no Smeargle for the helping hand, but you have now this extra giant damage threat. Palkia can't be feeling comfortable on the field. Uh, we don't know what's in the back for uh, Bing G, if there's anything that could try to save that Palkia for a turn. One thing we talked a lot about in the pregame that wasn't in the back in the last game was Stack Attacka. Yes. Uh, maybe recognizing he, he was going to have difficulty ever getting Trick Room up, the Stack Attacka doesn't have the bulk to set up the Trick Room for itself and attack for itself in this matchup. And so uh, it probably not in the back again, which makes any kind of defensive switch difficult, and we don't see one. The Ultra Necrozma is bursting out onto the field, and Tapu Lele from Bingxi's side of the field starting once again with a ally switch, swapping spots with that Palkia. Was it red? And it looks like uh, Kareem was able to correctly either predict the ally switch or decide he wanted to target down that Tapu Lele anyways. Moonblast missing the knockout without the help of the helping hand, but Ultra Necrozma with a Photon Geyser right beside it to knock out that Palkia. So a great read from Kareem there. Uh, getting rid of the Trick Room Setter once again, turn one. That poor Palkia. Yeah, you can call it a 50-50 play. A bit of Rock, Paper, Scissors out here. Uh, Bing Chi picked Rock in the ally switch, and Kareem followed right up with Paper and double targeted that uh, Palkia, knocked it out, prevented Trick Room. Uh, now, that's not the end of the game. Bing Chi, of course, just had to do this, just had to come back after, after losing the uh, Palkia on turn one in the last game, but it's going to be just as difficult as it was last time. Yeah, it, there is a bit of a mind game here for Kareem. You know, will the Tapu Lele go for another ally switch? Will Bingji, you know, switch out their Equaza via other means, which is exactly what we're seeing with the return of the Incineroar on the field for Bingji. But it, it's, I feel like Kareem could have safely targeted both Pokemon on the field with, you know, attacking moves and just not have been in a terrible position for this turn two. Moonblast from Tapu Lele will connect with the uh, Incineroar switching in on Bing Ji's side of the field does a ton of damage. Ultra Necrozma protects itself from a Moonblast from Bing Ji's Tapu Lele. Yeah, I think that's another good turn for Kareem. Uh, doesn't take the risk that requires just attacks like in the previous game. Goes ahead and puts the Moonblast in that spot. Uh, Bing Ji doesn't risk losing the Rayquaza and so brings in Incineroar hoping that he, the trade here is is maybe two attacks or something into the Incineroar spot that allows him to get the Moonblast off into the Ultra Necrozma, but it just protects itself. Uh, and now these Incineroars on the field not really offering that much because it can't fake out uh, these Pokemon. Has to wait till the end of the turn to try to get uh, a dark move off onto that Necrozma. Yeah, and looking at how much damage that Moonblast did in the previous turn, I mean, this Incineroar is either going to be barely hanging in there or be facing down a KO this turn. Ultra Necrozma switching out, and it looks like Kareem has decided to bring the Metagross this time around, and Incineroar switching out as well, and uh, the Rayquaza coming back out onto the field for Bingji. 
Yeah, the Metagross is definitely something that can help against the Surquaza, something that's able to take one of those Dragon Ascents. Moonblast from the Tapu Lele on Kareem's side of the field, connecting with the opposing Tapu Lele and gets the special attack drop. This is going to further weaken the Moonblast from Bingji's own Tapu Lele, which targets down a Metagross, which wasn't going to be very effective anyways, but still, this Metagross is in a great spot right now to pick up the knockout onto the opposing Tapu Lele with something like an Iron Head, while Kareem's own Tapu Lele just targets down the Rayquaza. Yeah, Kareem's in total control of this game now, right? Uh, the Incineroar needs to come back in here while one of these Pokemon stays around, but uh, he's got so much offensive pressure, it's going to be really difficult for Bingji to ever find a spot where he can get an attack off. And once he does, you're, you know, you're expecting those attacks. The goal has to be Dragon Ascent, but because that Metagross is there, that Dragon Ascent is not a KO per turn. At some point, you're going to have to land something else into Metagross. Incineroar is already very low, and so trying to expect that the only damage source for that Metagross is going to be something from it is difficult. Tapu Lele leaving the field on Bingji's side and the Incineroar taking its place. Intimidate will not be connecting with that Metagross because it has not Mega Evolved yet and as a result still maintains the clear body ability. The Rayquaza will be the first Pokemon on the field to Mega Evolve this turn. Uh, taking that Mega form once again, bringing back with it the Delta Stream to weaken any super effective attacks against it. And there's the Mega Evolution from Metagross as well. So we have two very powerful Mega Pokemon in a showdown going into uh, one of the latter turns of Game 2 here in Portland. Moonblast from the Tapu Lele will connect with the Rayquaza. No ally switch from Bingji this turn. That is an easy knockout right there. There wouldn't be an ally switch anyways because Incineroar is on the field. Um, but that uh, Metagross going for an Iron Head into the Incineroar, putting it in with a KO range of a Moonblast next turn. But looks like we're going to be seeing... Uh, uh, the return of Tapu Lele and probably the end of this game, too, very, very soon. Yeah, Bingji looked for the same play he got in game one of just letting Rayquaza sit there in front of that Scarf Moonblast and get an attack off, but Kareem learned his lesson from game one. At no point, actually, uh, in this game, too, took that risk. Every time Rayquaza was there, the Moonblast went to that spot. He wasn't going to just allow Tapu Lele to go down that easily, and it makes a big difference in him able to, being able to close this out. Yeah, Moonblast knocks out that Incineroar. Metagross going for the Iron Head to KO that Tapu Lele and will be entering a game three here as Bingji or excuse me, as Kareem ties up the score. So what an exciting game too. Just a complete switch of styles from uh, Kareem. I think leaving the smear goal either, you know, later on in his team or on the bench otherwise, um, really allowed him to just pull the like full offensive uh, power of the this kind of team and really threaten Bingji in such a way where he couldn't use the little wiggle room he had once Trick Room was removed. You have to wonder if uh, for Game 3, Bingji's going to stick with that Palkia lead or maybe try and find some other way. If not to get Trick Room up, at least open things up a little bit further for him. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. The Smeargle, like you say, was left behind in favor of the Metagross, probably. Uh, and the Metagross is a good adjustment to deal with the Rayquaza. But it's, Definitely. Sriggle actually did provide a good amount of value in Game 1, getting a useful Follow Me off, that helping hand that made uh, Moonblast decay. KO. Uh, on, on Bing G's side, I think you've got, got to, at some point, try the, the Stack Attack. Uh, it can do so much damage. Uh, it gives you a second option to get Trick Room up, so that if Palkia goes down, you, you have another path. It... You can even try putting both on the field and really making things difficult on uh, Kareem to decide where which one is actually going to go for that Trick Room. Or you could go for Trick Room on both if you're really that afraid. <laughs> or, or, yeah. Um, and you hope that at least one of them goes down before exactly. the end of the turn. It works sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So I expect to see that just because he needs to find something more consistent here. I, don't, I think the way he won game one is not very really reproducible. I think Kareem made the correct adjustments in his play style during Definitely. the game that denied that same kind of comeback. Yeah, I, I really want to see how Bingji is going to adjust because going from game one to game two for him, there just wasn't any adjustment at all. Like, he brought the same lead, you know, he tried some of the s same strategies, but now that Kareem knew what to expect, especially in the form of that ally switch, you know, that was it. And it looks like Bingji going with the same lead once again for the third time that Tapu Lele and the Palkia, and then on Kareem's side of the field, once again, the Tapu Lele and the Dawn Wings Necrozma. So. We could be seeing a little bit of ally switch mind games. We did see the ally switch turn one in game two, but Kareem was able to correctly call that. Yeah, and for, we're kind of in, into another game of rock, paper, scissors. All uh, right. the, the ally switch will either come out or not come out, and Palkia will either go down or not go down. Uh, 
if that's the way Bing G decides to play this. And you know what? It is a 50 50 chance to get Trick Room, and getting Trick Room probably win the game. Uh, now, he doesn't immediately have a all that much offense to follow up. Palkia's Spatial Wind would be able to go after Necrozma. Uh, Rayquaza, if it came in and in the favor of the Lele being knocked out, would be able to threaten that top of Lele. So at least for one turn, you do have a really good offensive pressure, but I think there are good pivots where you get something like the Metagross in and then refuse to Mega Evolve it, which keeps it slower uh, than some of these other Pokemon. So we'll have to see. Well, there is the ally switch from Bingji once again going with that strategy. It Did Kareem call it? Moonblast no. into the Tapu Lele. It's not a knockout, which means unless Kareem sort of split the difference with these attacks, which it looks like he did not, Tapu Lele will be the one KO'd this turn, and Palkia finally gets an opportunity to do literally anything other than come out onto the field, and of course it goes for that trick room. Well, in a true 50-50, we get the right result. One result in game two and the other in game three and now we get to see the path this game goes down one this this Palkia gets a chance to get that trick room gets a chance for Bing to go on the offensive with the Palkia and probably with this Rayquaza and try to really make the best use of his next four turns to get as much damage as he can. Oh, it's, but it's the Incineroar. Yeah, it, it is the Incineroar that takes the field, which is a very interesting adjustment here since Incineroar, you know, definitely threatens down that Dongwing to Krasma a lot um, alongside the Palkia, but I, I would worry about how uh, Bing Shi's planning on knocking out this Tapu Lele, because if it's left out onto the field to go for another Moonblast, you know, we saw how much damage that did to Palkia in game two. That is... Uh, it's so close to a KO. It, it is, but it isn't the KO, which may be just enough. You know, it's okay to uh, allow Palky to take a lot of damage if you're not giving up the KOs that that take away all of your offensive pressure. Yeah, I, I guess from Bing Ji, I'd really like to see him try and get a KO this turn since he went through all the trouble to get the Trick Room and he finally was able to successfully set it up. Uh, crunch into a Protecting Ultra Necrozma and it looks like we're getting a Z move from the Palkia. It's that Watarium Z Crystal and the Hydro Vortex, which I I think you mentioned we saw on stream yesterday as well. Yeah, uh, so this should be Hydro Vortex into Tapu Lele. Uh, yeah. I think it needs to be a KO for Bing G here. Well, if there's anything that's going to get a KO, it's going to be a Hydro Vortex based off of a Hydro Pump. You know, taking advantage of the fact that the Z Crystal, you know, it guarantees the accuracy onto that Tapu Lele, something that Hydro Pump is known not to have, but also gives it a nice boost in power. So Palkia being able to do the damage, remove that Tapu Lele from the field, and Kareem revealing that Metagross might have been left behind, sending in the Smeargle now. Yeah, just made the adjustment back to Smeargle, and I think that's actually perfect. Perfect for him here, where if uh, Metagross had come in, it would have been easy to Spatial Run the Necrozma, get some damage off with uh, Incineroar against the Metagross, and not really worry too much about what the Metagross was doing back to these Pokemon. Yeah. But instead, the Smeargle comes in and will cause a lot of problems for these two, because it will keep Necrozma safe. It can follow me away two attacks and guarantee Necrozma a chance to, to go after Palkia with something like Light, light that Burns the Sky, or a, a chance to to try to spore something, maybe? Uh, who knows? It, it's a it's a tough uh, call to make since you do have to wait one turn after the Ultra Burst before you can go for something like Light That Burns right. the Sky. So Smeargle, if it goes for Follow Me here and Bingy decides to go for two attacks, it will be KO'd, but after that point, enough time has passed that uh, it might be possible for Kareem to just stall out the remainder of Trick Room and uh, be able to give Necrozma the uh, birth it needs to deal big damage. It, with the two attacks from Bingy's Pokemon, though, Smeargle will be taking the KO, and this Necrozma free to go for one attack into either the Incineroar or the Palkia. It's going to be a Photon Geyser targeting down the Palkia, and it brings it down to just below half of its health. Yeah, but you make a good point. That's an extra turn of Trick Room Burn, right? We got one of Necrozma protecting, one of Follow Me protecting Necrozma, yep. and then we can now get another turn of Necrozma protecting, but that does leave one at the end that's that's unaccounted for. Yeah, and, and you have to think about the mind games here too as Metagross is revealed to be the final Pokemon on uh, Kareem's side of the field. Metagross, it, you know, it's very possible that Kareem goes for a double protect here with both of his Pokemon using protect, not the traditional term of double protect. But if he does that, and or if he doesn't do that and Bingshi's able to call it, you know, Metagross and Palkia together could get a KO on either of these. Yeah, I mean, I think Palkia all by itself can KO Necrozma, and so if Necrozma is forced to protect, uh, Incineroar shouldn't be able to KO Metagross, but I don't think Metagross can actually take a KO back. We saw yesterday that this no. Metagross doesn't have Zen Headbutt, so shouldn't necessarily have the damage uh, for Palkia with something like Stomping Tantrum. Can't uh, uh, Iron Head, of course. And so uh, 
you know, Metagross can be left there, even if it doesn't protect, without risking too much. And then, of course, there's that dangling last turn of Trick Room. Nothing for Necrozma to switch to. And as soon as that Spatial Rend lands into it, uh, things look very bad for Kareem. Yeah, and you also have to remember as well, Bingji still has one Pokemon in the back of his party that we haven't seen yet. It's most likely going to be that Rayquaza. And stalling out Trick Room for Bingji or for Kareem might also give Rayquaza a better advantage when it comes to the matchup in the latter parts of this game. Yeah, it, would, it would, might end up having to fight against the Metagross, which isn't a great match for, up for the Rayquaza. If it has the Incineroar next to it also offering damage, it should be a winnable one. All right, well, that Metagross is going immediately for its Mega Evolution, going to gain the Tough Claws ability to help it deal more damage. Starting the turn off with a Protect, however. Ultra Necrozma also going for a Protect, so we won't be seeing any damage from these Pokemon this turn, but I think it's the next turn that where things are going to get a little bit more interesting. It is important to note, though, that Bingji did decide to target down the Mega Metagross with a Crunch and the Ultra Necrozma with a Spatial Ren. Yeah, I think that may have been a missed opportunity for Kareem to at least get some damage some damage out of this Metagross. Now Necrozma needs to go for a double protect, yep. uh, stop that Spatial Ren from coming in, uh, and Metagross still won't be able to pick up a KO on this last turn of Trick Room. It will, of course, then become the fastest thing on the field. If Necrozma is still around and is the fastest thing on the field itself, there's a path forward, but if Necrozma goes down, it's going to be really difficult for Metagross to win a 1v3, uh, even once it has speed in its advantage. Yeah, and one thing I just noticed is this is also the last turn of the Psychic Terrain. So again, if that is the Mega Rayquaza in the back of Bingy's party, you know, Extreme Speed could also be a viable option for him as we enter the latter part of this game. Uh, you know, it won't be able to do enough damage to get flat out uh, KOs. However, oh, Double it. Protect fails on that Ultra Necrozma, and we get a crunch into the Metagross from that Incineroar, bringing it down to half of its health. Here's the Spatial Rend from the Palkia, going to connect with that Ultra Necrozma, and that is a easy KO. It is a one versus three, and it looks like Palkia just bought its ticket into into the semifinals here in Portland, if it's able to knock out this Metagross, who targets down that Incineroar with a Stomping Tantrum. So uh, it looks like it's going to be very easy for Bingji to just clean this up. Yeah, it should be. You know, it's not the cleanest uh, way to move forward with having to play two 50-50s of the uh, ally switch on the first turn. But I think sometimes that's the way these these really offensive psych psychic spam teams work out, where you're just relying on getting the KOs. You can't go into protects. You can't go into uh, ally switches that just moved. Um, and so... As soon as those couple of things are like don't go your way, things become very difficult. Yeah, Metagross getting the KO on that Incineroar with another Stomping Tantrum, but Palkia just goes for another Trick Room, knowing that it will be slower, and at that final Pokemon on Bingshi's side of the field as well, the, the Rayquaza should probably be slower than that Mega Metagross in Trick Room. So just very great sort of end-of-game management there. You know, no, realizing that if you get, if you allow Metagross to be ha faster, it might be able to start flinching stuff with Iron Head or who knows what else. So just making sure you have the speed advantage and then starting to go for damage to clean things up. Yeah, there maybe are still some paths here. You know, an Iron Head crit after Dragon Ascent drops and then a bunch of Hydro Pump misses <laughs> yeah. or something. But yeah, it should be, uh, should be Palky and Rayquaza being able to, uh, to close this out. Uh, yeah, there, I guess there could also be some protect shenanigans as well, as it looks like Kareem is going for uh, another double protect, does not get its uh, Hydro Pump from that Palkia, will connect and get the KO, and just like that, Bingji is moving on to the semifinals here at the 2020 Portland Regional Championships. Yeah, really well played by Bingji to find find his paths in, recognize if he wants the Trick Room, the Alice, which is a good way to get it, and that first game recognizing if he needs to make a comeback, something like that one chance that he might have had to get the... the a Dragon Ascent off, the, you know, he might overplay here. If I protect, I will definitely take the Moon Blast on the second turn with Rayquaza, but right now is a chance, and he gets it off, gets it into the top of Lele, and swings that first game, uh, and then he only needs to win one of two. Yep. Ally Switch is a good way to win one of two. <laughs> I mean, if you're uh, hoping that, you know, coin flip odds work out as they uh, theoretically should, I'd say, yeah. But um, it, I find, I don't know, I, Ally Switch is such a good move, but it's so stressful to play. Like, it, just like you said, you know, it really is a 50-50. Your opponent's either going to use it or they don't. And to be able to guess that consistently is something very difficult. And, and even knowing how to play it in a way that, like, doesn't lend itself to being predicted, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's so difficult. So it, it's so cool to see a Pokemon like Tap. Lele, uh, you know, utilize that so effectively. Yeah, and use it as a, a trick room support option. We've seen it a lot of times to support other the really offensive Pokemon. You know, you get the ally switch so that you can get another big attack off. But using it here, almost like the the redirection to support uh, yeah. trick room, where you 
uh, just try to position your field so that uh, the trick room does go off and then you have the advantage and it's your turn to play all the offense. Yeah, so um, we'll have to see who he's going to be facing off against in the semifinals. Do you know who we're going to be featuring in our next top eight match by any chance? Yeah, it'll be Steven Mia versus Kimo Nishimura. All right, so we're just going outside to in on the top eight bracket here in Portland. So please stay tuned. We'll be back with more Pokemon action.